a professor of virology and biotechnology in the Department of Pathological Sciences and a director of the Division of Biotechnology and Molecular Medicine at Louisiana State LSU Biomed, Dr. Colusis has extensively utilized viral vectors for vaccine development and cancer treatment. His other research interests lie in the structure and function of proteins and glycoprotein and the use of virus-like particles for drug delivery, bioinformatics and the development of new drugs to combat infectious diseases. Constantine, if you are there, the stage is yours. Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, you know, my name is uh, Gus Kusudas. Uh, I'm a professor of virology and biotechnology um, at Louisiana State University and head of the Department of Pathological Sciences. I also have the honor of being the president of the National Association of Idea Principal Investigators, uh, NEPI. Uh, NEPI is a uh, not-for-profit organization uh, that represents 23 states and Puerto Rico and all the NIH funding that goes into the special program from the National Institute of General Medical Sciences, which is called IDEA, which is really funding uh, biomedical research at multiple levels, uh, including uh, primarily undergraduate institutions, um, flagship institutions, um, clinical translational research centers, as well as a number of other uh, co-funding opportunities through NGMS. And I will tell you a little bit about uh, NEPI first and everything else that we do here, but um, I'm delighted to participate in this uh, bioinformatics um, uh, conference. Uh, we have a long-standing relationship with Pine Biotech and we have embraced uh, the platform and a lot of the training as well as the software um, and a number of other things that we do. And uh, Pine Biotech is instrumental in helping our programs here at LSU, as well as through NEVI, providing uh, content and um, re research opportunities, as well as training modules throughout the 23 states and Puerto Rico. So NEPI uh, aims to protect and promote the IDEA programs. Uh, as you'll see later, it's approximately $450 million per year allocated to approximately 200 uh, research centers throughout the, uh, the 23 states of Puerto Rico. It fosters interactions, promotes research sharing, enhances the visibility of all these programs that I just mentioned, and uh, develops consensus on priorities, identifies and disseminates best practices, and also identifies opportunities and developing strategies. One of the main uh, concept is that by promoting biomedical research within these 23 states in Puerto Rico that traditionally do not receive a, a high level of uh, NIH funding, that uh, we be able to develop manpower and lift those states to be able to compete for traditional NIH funding through all the categorical uh, NIH uh, institutes. Um, this is the uh, leadership team um, with uh, that uh, currently uh, you can see on the NEPI website and uh, um, all the programs um, uh, fund the organization through a setup fee and NEPI does a number of different uh, activities uh, that I will mention to you um, uh, as we move forward. So the mission again is NEPI is to provide leadership and communication and to improve the biomedical research throughout the 23 states in Puerto Rico. We want to foster interactions among the IDEA programs and all these 23 states in Puerto Rico to promote uh, sharing among uh, resources among these different programs. And importantly enough that uh, all the IMBRIs, as well as the Cobridge CTRs, especially the IMBRI programs, have a special emphasis a mandatory emphasis on data science and bioinformatics. So one of the major aspects of the IMBRI programs um, the, uh, is actually the uh, promoting data science and bioinformatics. I am currently the principal investigator of the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network, which is uh, one of the IMBRI programs. There's only one IMBRI per state. So there are 24 of those programs, approximately 20 million over five years. 
and uh, is devoted to really support primarily at the graduate institutions, creating a pipeline with a mandatory um, activity to be uh, promoting data science and bioinformatics. So uh, again, we're developing priorities and uh, consensus. In fact, the, all the Imbri PIs are meeting October 18 in New Orleans uh, to arrive at a consensus on priorities and new directions. And we want to identify, disseminate best practices and to develop strategies to achieve the common goals of the entire IDEA program, which is really a pipeline uh, coming from the undergraduate to the graduate program, to the postdoc level, to the faculty level, and beyond. So history of the idea it started in 1993 with approximately 50 million. Over the years, it has really become uh, much bigger, approaching 1% of the NIH funding totally. And uh, of course, the program is very unique because it serves unique populations, such as rural and medically undeserved communities in these states. So health disparity is one of the big thing, topic that's actually addressed uh, through those states. Uh, that predominantly have uh, a majority of these health disparity issues. Um, this is the after 21, the funding right now is, sits at 2022 at 430 million. Hopefully in uh, next fiscal budget, it will go approaching the 500 million, uh, which is, will be approximately 1% of the NIH budget. And of course, uh, a sizable part of uh, every state's funding is actually uh, this IDEA program, as you see in Louisiana here, Mississippi, uh, you can see a 21 million of the 176 million in 2021 was actually idea funding. Uh, the different programs that I mentioned include the Centers for Biomedical Research Excellence, the COBIs, and those are for um, mentored by senior investigators, and their goal is to take young faculty, typically tenure track assistant professors, uh, to become independently funded through an R1 mechanism, and the program can transit to a phase two and phase three based on how successful it is in graduating independently funded investigators. The IDEA network, like the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network, has a different goal of promoting biomedical research in primarily at the graduate institutions, typically the goal for R15 type of grant applications, or, but even beyond that, and to create a pipeline of undergraduate and graduate students that ultimately feed into COBRIS and other programs. We also have the Clinical Translational Research Centers, there are sort of uh, small uh, clinical translational centers. The bigger ones are in Massachusetts and elsewhere. And those are approximately funded about 20 to 25 million and have a different scope of really translational medicine, translational research. The Pennington Biomedical Research Center is now the headquarters of the uh, Louisiana-based uh, uh, clinical translation center. It's called the LACATS. The IDEA program also provides co-funding. It's very important because if you are submitting R1, R15, and you're not within the pay lines, you could actually get um, uh, funding by uh, having co-funding provided by the National Institute of General Medical Sciences. And there are also technology transfer accelerator hubs that were funded previously, and they may continue in the future, creating uh, an entrepreneurship activity to promote also economic development within these 23 states in Puerto Rico. Um, so um, the uh, NIGMS uh, promotes the co additional programs. Over the years, we had uh, collaborations with other non-IDEA uh, NIH programs, including the maternal and infant mortality research, uh, the COVID-19 patient registry, cloud computing, um, and affiliation with the NIH Strides program, Google and Amazon. In fact, they really discount prices for IDEA participants to participate in uh, the, these particular programs, in, uh, including uh, Google and Amazon related products. Um, they're also continuing uh, uh, new activities in collaboration between NGMS and other ones. And I would urge you to look at the NGMS website to actually see these new initiatives that are of course supported by the IDEA program and categorical NIH institutes. Um, these are the IDEA states uh, in green here uh, that you can see. And uh, the programs include, again, the COBI, Zebra, CTRs, co-funding, and the entrepreneurship uh, hubs. Uh, the NEPI in itself um, has a number of activities, and I would urge you to look at the nepi.org uh, website. It funds ID undergraduate travel funds to Washington, D.C. to visit Congress. 
it awards um, uh, undergraduate graduate students and assistant professors best presentations. We have four regional idea meetings in four of those uh, regions that uh, NIGMS has, um, you know, uh, be able to uh, enlist us. And uh, we also have a national meeting, the National uh, Idea Symposium of Biomedical Science Excellence on NISBRI that um, was held every other year in Washington, D.C. Uh, in person. Um, those were basically postponed because of COVID-19. The next virtual conference would be held December 12th through 14. Uh, it would be from noon to 6 p.m. to accommodate the different uh, time zones. And we hope to make these announcements and uh, start accepting abstracts and all presentations uh, uh, very soon. Uh, we also uh, uh, will be uh, through the NEPI, you'll be able to access idea wide databases and research expertise and network with other investigators. And uh, we have offered oops, um, discounts to virtual courses in data science and bioinformatics in a collaboration with uh, the uh, Pine uh, Biotech uh, that you see on the NEPI uh, website. Uh, a number of activities included NEPI sponsored symposium. This was a 2021 symposium. Uh, other symposia have also been promoted uh, through the NEPI, including, I think, uh, this one here, this conference. I hope it's also on the uh, NEPI website. And the last thing I wanted to talk to you about is the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. Uh, this is the website for the uh, 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 network itself. And um, uh, you can see through that a number of information about Louisiana specific uh, activities. Um, we do, uh, we have a summer program that is also funded by the Louisiana Board of Regions. We had over 50 to 70 people participating in uh, different projects of the summer related to bioinformatics and computational biology um, that we execute uh, every summer. And of course, um, the LBRN has uh, two major cores. One is the bioinformatics and biocomputation core, which is headed by Dr. Chris Taylor, who is a professor at the LSU Health Science Center in New Orleans and a protein production purification proteomics lipidomics core that's uh, headed by Dr. Johan Lee, who is a uh, professor here at the LSU campus uh, in the Department of Biological uh, Sciences. Um, the LBRN has an annual meeting that's scheduled for uh, most likely the second week of uh, January. Um, and we do uh, invite uh, people from all over Louisiana to participate, especially people that are funded or participate in active or BRM programs, but others uh, can actually visit. We also sponsor a bioinformatics regional conference, and that will be uh, planned, uh, hopefully in New Orleans at the University of New Orleans campus uh, sometime next April. Through our LBRM website, uh, you'll be able to see recorded lectures or previous bioinformatics conferences. We had one last year, which was virtual. They had 10, uh, fantastic speakers from all over the uh, country, uh, included uh, Michael Snyder, the chairman of the uh, Department of Genetics at Stanford, um, promoting this composite of uh, uh, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, to ultimately arrive at a digital twin that would enable to predict diseases and follow patterns, uh, changes in the body, uh, in, in addition to a uh, complete scan, um, you know, head to toe um, that um, provides uh, new information of um, how basically everything works and integrating this data into a digital twin. It was, uh, I think, a fantastic uh, presentation. And that's where basically, uh, ultimately, uh, the science of uh, data science and bioinformatics will go, especially for health you know, where you'll be able to combine uh, huge data sets, um, whether it would be uh, uh, genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, health-related uh, factors and clinical readings, um, to be able to combine all those to create a digital twin that ultimately would predict or basically um, detect any potential perturbations in the body system 
to um, allow for prophylactic or therapeutic uh, approaches to uh, disease that may occur uh, much later in, in life. Um, so this is what uh, I wanted to sort of uh, formally discuss with you. And um, I'll be happy in the remainder time to uh, answer any questions that uh, you may have uh, with regard to NIH, the IDEA program, NEPI, LBRN, uh, or any other topic in bioinformatics. I had the pleasure working with Pine Biotech to offer an advanced course in transcriptomics a few years ago. Um, we are now promoting the creation of a bioinformatics, data science bioinformatics course in every uh, primarily undergraduate institution uh, in Louisiana. Those are eight institutions in that are primary institutions. However, there are 27 that participate throughout the state of Louisiana. So we hope to start with LSU uh, Shreveport to create uh, with Dr. Eskazvek a bioinformatics course at the 4,000 level for undergraduates and graduates. And uh, that will be using content uh, from Pine Biotech, as well as faculty members from the network. And we hope to repeat that and create a data science bioinformatics course in every of the eight uh, principal primarily undergraduate institutions. And this is really the purpose of LBRN and the IDEA program to provide opportunities and training uh, for biomedical research with a special emphasis in data science and bioinformatics. So um, I'll stop sharing and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. All this, all this help. Uh, we just went through the poster presentations and the awards and to have this much help out there is wonderful. So uh, how is NEPI working with the IDEA community to promote biomedical research training and advance the importance of all the NEPI programs? So um, NEPI is um, the principal or co-principal organizer of the national NISBRI meeting and also participates in all the regional meetings. Um, all the registrations and some of the expenses are really picked up by NEPI. Uh, however, LSU has a um, U13 grant to support the conference. So it's actually an NIH, LSU, NEPI collaboration to run those major uh, conferences. And we provide stipends, uh, honoraria for bioinformatics speakers, and we organize symposia within those conferences for bioinformatics. The other um, important thing that we already have started is to provide uh, subsidized or discounted courses, trainings. We started with Pine Biotech um, to throughout the network. Uh, also, we have asked um, uh, content that is being created by any of these, these programs, uh, 200 programs, uh, whether that would be special projects or exercises or even, you know, a recorded um, uh, uh, training uh, that can be uploaded on the NEPI website and shared among all these individuals. Um, would like to also to ultimately create a forum for job seekers and placement of graduate students, um, especially in the data science bioinformatics sector. And, you know, we're moving towards the, this goal as we try to populate the website uh, more than we have at, at this point. I, I don't think I can hear you. For some reason, you got muted. Ah, yes. I wonder who clicked my mic button. It's probably me. Um, this is from the uh, chat. Um, this is specific to African students, but you may want to answer more generally. Are there internships or workshops that are fully funded for students regarding bioinformatics, uh, GWAS, and transcriptomics data analysis, possibly specifically? Any, any of that? So, obviously, um, you know, through these programs, all the INBRE programs have fellowships and support students, but really, you know, they're limited to those state um, participants. Uh, so, for instance, the Puerto Rico INBRI will support Puerto Rico, Louisiana will support uh, Louisiana through the BRN and so on. Um, 
at this point, we don't have fellowships for international uh, students to participate um, in, in particular programs unless they're incoming students to any of the participating institutions here in the U.S. However, it is possible through philanthropic donations to uh, NEPI, and we've had some funding before that, that uh, that could be something that we could work in the long run. Very good. And, and in relation, um, uh, the, the, the backside team helped me out with a uh, career opportunities link on the NEPI website. So that was posted to chat for those of you that are interested in it. So we've got that link up there also. So make sure you check out the chat box. So how can all these programs from the whole program work together more efficiently? Is there a way to do that? Well, this is why uh, the Imbri uh, uh, programs, um, which are really um, for uh, uh, all, all of them, including the pre principal investigators and the coordinators, are meeting in New Orleans October 18 in a whole day meeting to actually find ways that we could communicate better together. There's already um, uh, annual meetings where the principal investigators are meeting to discuss potential collaborations. We do participate in regional meetings because again, five or six states have their own regional meetings. So we all get together and discuss different things. There haven't been formal ways to actually get programs to work together. Part of the uh, difficulty is because the funding is limited to uh, individual states. So we cannot use Louisiana funding to send our students easily to another state and the vice versa. So it has to be some kind of an exchange where you know, yeah, somehow we'll be able to do this. And some of that has been occurring already. So we can send students, for instance, to the Mississippi proteomic training courses. But if you look at the Navy website and you look at all these programs, it's pretty amazing the amount of resources uh, for biomedical research that they have. And um, uh, NIH is really promoting this synergy and collaboration. Um, I think we started doing this, but obviously we could do much better. So we've we've posted two links now, one at the uh, Om Omics Logic website and, and at NEPI. So what are opportunities for students pursuing data science or other Omics studies at NEPI? And are there formal certificate courses that can be obtained? Do they have to go for, please talk into that, please. Yeah, one of the discussions uh, has been uh, whether uh, individual programs, whether it would be LBRN for Louisiana creates a certificate program. Uh, the difficulty there is that we have multiple institutions uh, and in order to actually get students enrolled and receive credit, uh, a particular program has to be accepted by all campuses. So the alternative to this is to actually help through LBRN and maybe NEPI to have uh, courses in individual campuses that are supported through NEPI or LBRN. Uh, I do envision though the possibility of having a NEPI specific certificate uh, or a um, uh, state specific certificate. Uh, however, that certificate would be a NEPI certificate, not necessarily a full credit certificate that the typical uh, higher education institution will give. And um, the enrollment for this uh, would be hopefully partially supported by philanthropic donations, as well as registration uh, that would be paid individually, hopefully at the minimal cost to have um, as wide participation as possible. Do the universities recognize the NEPI certificates as access to other programs or like uh, almost like gained hours that they don't have to get later? Uh, they do not right now because, you know, most institutions keep very close control of their credit hours. Um, uh, however, um, obviously, these certificates do count for the job market as well as uh, potentially for incoming graduate students or preparation, advanced preparation, so they could actually meet expectations when they get into a re regular credit-oriented curriculum. 
um, I, I know little about these certificate courses, and I'm sure they may vary. But is there a is there a time? Can a person get a certificate in eight weeks? Is it eight months? Can you speak to that? Well, we are really at the planning stage right now, and um, uh, the anticipation is that there will be a very specific program where you'll be getting uh, different levels of certification. Um, by providing a variety of different um, uh, modules that will start from very basic, going to very advanced. And um, the certificate could be awarded at the different levels, level one, level two, level three, um, you know, whether you know, be the expert certificate, that type of thing. Um, so uh, that's something that we have been, you know, discussing and we hope to launch um, maybe at the beginning of next year after we get, um, you know, everything that we need to do uh, uh, established already so we can actually pilot it uh, first and then move it to have it a bona fide program. So what I hear you saying is that someone might be able to go a short, shorter period of time and get a lower level certificate, but then build on that, build on that, and build on that possibly. Is where... Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, Pine Biotech has a lot of content right now. We work, maybe works very closely with uh, Pine Biotech. Um, like I said, we hope to get some philanthropic donations to be able to allow people to register at a lower cost through NEPI and then uh, use the NEPI credentials to validate, you know, those certificates at that level. Because don't forget, there are really practically a um, hundred institutions of higher learning in 24 states that are basically support NEPI at this point. Fascinating. So we, we already talked about uh, internships and job opportunities, but what can a student do after they complete a training or, or get a certificate? Where can they find research or or things to bite into? Any other well, resources? It depends on the level of the student. Um, obviously, if you're undergraduate and you're uh, seeking to go to graduate school, uh, that becomes very important because... Uh, you hit the ground running and you know a lot of different things. And depending if you go in engineering or in uh, bioinformatics or data science, you'll be able to really just uh, go through that curriculum uh, very easily. Obviously, uh, in the uh, in industry right now, anybody that uh, is uh, has credentials in data science specifically, but bioinformatics in general, are uh, sought out. And um, uh, and that creates a lot of job opportunities in the clinical uh, setting, as well as on the research enterprises, uh, where will be biotech startups and so on. So it depends. Um, you know, the ultimately this is a data science intensive environment. I think anybody that works in data science and bioinformatics, uh, uh, depending on the field itself, could secure probably a very bright future. Uh, either in the higher education, academic setting, or in industry. Fascinating. Well, thank you yet again. We're going to go ahead and release you to the rest of your day. And uh, we thank you for being here. We appreciate all the input on NEPI and all that you're involved in. And uh, again, just thank you so much. And uh, we will hopefully see you again. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, uh, Grant. And then uh, anybody that may have some uh, questions, please. Uh, you know, contact other NEPI uh, directly through the contact information or LBRN, um, the Louisiana Biomedical Research Network. Okay, have a okay. great day. Bye now. Thank you.